Welcome to the Shock Your Potential podcast, where we focus on creating positive, productive, and profitable workplaces. I am your host, Michael Sherlock. I am a leadership and sales expert, best known for being serious about business, despite what you may think by my appearance of often very colorful hair and sometimes crazy shoes. My guests bring a wealth of information that will support your career and your business, along with many pearls of wisdom to support balance in your personal and professional lives. Listen in as I have another amazing conversation with a guest who will certainly shock your potential. So my guest is Janelle Dyan, and she is an expert on leadership, especially with women. So first of all, Janelle, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And again, I've said it several times. Thank you for your uh, endorsing me and supporting me on this uh, new authorship journey. So oh, it was so fun to read um, when I got those chapters because it's really, I, you know, how we look and feel really impacts how we're received. So, you know, it's like you, you've got to, my husband and I love to people watch and we were in Milan this summer, which sounds so fancy. You know, we were in Milan this <laughs> summer and we were sitting having a, um, whatever drink we were having and we were watching people go by and Milan's such an amazing place because people dress so fancy, even just right. to go out and walk awesome. their dog. And so our, our uh, thing is we thought we need to come up with a show, say it's, they own it, you know, like, cause when they walked by and they're like, powerful. They might've been wearing the craziest outfit, but they own it. Right. So, absolutely. yeah. But Janelle, tell, tell us a little bit about, you know, your business, what you do. You, you have some phenomenal experiences. You've done some great, incredible things, but, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, what that means to you. What do you do every day? What I do is um, I am the CEO and founder of Janelle Diane. And I'm an executive brand strategist for women in leadership. I am a speaker and now an author of Story Style Brand, Why Corporate Results Are a Matter of Personal Style. Um, And so I, over the last seven years, um, and all this experience of launching a company and kind of saying, what's my purpose? And what's the story I want to tell? What's my story? And how can I allow, and what process can I do to allow other women, especially as they're in leadership, as they're on their own stage, how can I help them do that? Um, how can I help them get to this stage, but yet really go back to, to redefining and honing and as you say, shock, disrupt, um, and really think about who they are. And so I, am, um, I help them build this brand by starting with their own story. For me, in the beginning, or for even now, I go into their closet, and each piece that they buy is a story. Um, mm-hmm. And so I've been very fortunate, like you said, I work with women in leadership that have been at the World Economic Forum. They've been standing on the stage for Salesforce and Dreamforce, LinkedIn, uh, Zoetis as a CEO, as a woman in, launches into the CEO level. But I also work with women who are at that critical pivot stage. Um, you know, women who were stay-at-home mothers and said, it's my turn. I want to go there. Um, yeah. What can I do? And how, how can I say I'm worth it? And what stories do I want to tell? Um, and that kind of, uh, that process. And so with this methodology, it's a three-step methodology that I lay out in the book. Um, and it starts with your story. Then you build in your leadership style, which includes how you appear, so that you mm-hmm. launch a brand that is truly authentic and um vulnerable and real and it aligns perfectly today especially with zoom right that that we have to be seen not just personal and professional brand but one brand um and so i've loved every failure that i've done i've loved every (laughs) you know pivot stage and you know things like what shocked me and and why that was so critical to get to where i was today so many great messages and everything you just said and I was, I was thinking two things. Number one is, you know, I have colorful hair. And in fact, you know, over the last couple months, while I haven't been able to get it done, my husband has helped me cut it. Instead of being able to, you know, dye out the gray, I just keep adding blue. <laughs> and I have people um, all the time say, oh, I could never do that. Oh, I wish I could do that. I could never do that. And I, I always ask them, well, first of all, tell me why you would want to do it. You know, why would you want to have, you know, purple hair, or green hair, or what, you know, anything like mine? And, and 
because I want to know, you know, what's behind it. Cause my journey was vastly different, but you know, a lot of times it's because I want to make a statement. I feel, I feel boxed in. I feel like people only see me one way and that would surprise them. And I love those answers. And then I always say, you can do this. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be permanent like mine does. You could go to CVS and get the stuff you just spray in and have some fun with it. The question is, what is it that you want to have shine through that your first reaction is, I can't? Because that tells a lot about whether or not any person puts limitations on themselves and then feels like they can't get to that next level. So how can, if I can't express myself with my hair color, you know, are there ways at least maybe in my clothing that I can start to express myself and not feel like I have to look or act or be a certain way? I think there's what you talk about is really trying to find that freedom within yourself. When someone, when a woman comes to me and says, I want to work with you, or a corporation says, I want to invest in our women in leadership, there's a really, there's a huge shift that's happening inside. And like you say, tell me more, tell me why. Mm -hmm. And there, what you've done with your blue hair and what we can do as leaders with how we appear and how, what, what pieces we choose to put on is you're giving the permission to, for, I'm going to always talk about just women, but you're giving permission to women to say, I want you to think out of the box. Actually, there is no box. Let's just go there. No and mm -hmm. my blue hair has started a conversation internally with you because now you're saying, well, why can't I do that? So let's go back to when you thought you couldn't do it before. Something of what you're wearing, your hair or whatever, that's the conversation that you want to have. And so for you, your blue hair represents that permission to come in and to join me on, on what you've done in your stories and your journey. And that you're saying, I'm going to help you get there. I'm going to shop, you know, I'm going to work with you. And I'm going to really find your potential, but it might not be blue hair. But the, the visceral feeling I feel when I see your blue hair, I want the feeling. That's why they say I can never do blue hair. It's more of I can never do and be as bold as you with my right. own story because of fear, because I've been told that, you know, it doesn't matter. And you're saying, look, share your story. It might not be blue, but, you know, let, let's right. try something else. So Absolutely. And that, that power that comes from knowing you can share your story and you can share and be who you are. And I, you know, I love to tell people, look, I was a, a VP of sales for a company where I was responsible for a hundred million dollars in revenue every year and, you know, managing 500 employees. And when they interviewed me, I had purple hair. So, you know, I mean, you can, the question is, what do you want and how, how comfortable are you? And then what steps can you start to take to do that? Whatever that, whatever that, that is. Right. And exactly. And I think going back to, especially right now, right, we're trying to get back in the work, workforce and a lot of people are going to be interviewing for jobs and, mm -hmm. and, you know, interviewing behind, behind a screen. Um, and part of why, you know, this blue hair for you has become your brand um, is because you're telling people, hey, follow me, we're going to do something different. We're going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to lead this in a different way and you're going to love it. Um, and I think also <laughs> when you're interviewing with companies, you need to understand their story. And does my story align with their story? And can I get behind the purpose of this company? You know, the product right. and service, people don't buy for the product and service, they buy for the people and the leaders. Right. I talk about this in one of my articles about, all right, going back to your story before you walk in to the doors of the interview or before you turn on your Zoom, knowing mm -hmm. yourself and knowing to stand tall and saying, my story matters. And in some sense, it's their loss if I'm not there. And to take back that power of saying, I need them to you need me. Mm -hmm. And here's what I can provide. And here's, here's how I can make more value add in the purpose of your company so that the product and service is truly at the core of what we all value and all believe in. I love that. It is, it's absolutely so true. And, you know, when, when people, we're learning so much about ourselves and how we present in a completely different way, which um, I, I think is exceptional for us. If we really look at this from a, a perspective and say, okay, we know that at least for the next couple of years, a significant portion of our professional lives if not all of our professional lives for the next couple of years is going to be behind 
these screens and with cameras and and so i've been taping all these videos and so i've turned my office into you know this media studio and you know i've got you know fancy <laughs> lights and i've got you know because <laughs> Somebody, you know, one of my I, yeah, said, NPR, right? Yeah, exactly. One of my <laughs> teams said, "Okay, uh, you need to turn your desk around. We're tired of seeing your stairs." You know, I went, "Oh, <laughs> you need to start using a different chair when you tape because your office chair has a big, ugly back on it." I'm like, "Oh, I had no idea." And yeah. the more that I do it, and I think about what is the whole story I'm telling, not just because of my blue hair now, what story am I telling in everything else from how I know how my lighting is to, you know, where I choose to have the interview. You know, I think I'm just even looking at your background, what we learn about people and their backgrounds, you know, how you choose where you're going to be seen now is just as important as how you are dressed physically as well. So, yeah. you know, how... Talk about that because I know you've written an article on this recently. So, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, what, what advice you're giving people. It, within less than a split second, how you appear behind the screen, in front, all these little things um, play into a part of building trust. Because way back when, we would have to, you know, when we you know, lived in caves, caves and tribes or whatever, we would have to make a, a split decision on whether something's threatening or trust, trustworthy. Whether I'm going, that, that you're an expert or I'm not quite sure that you have something to, to help me with. And there's that missing link right now in all these uh, brand strategies, right? That are out there and, and know your brand and what's your messaging, but what's that missing link? And that's the DNA, that's the human behavior. That's how do we capitalize on the conversation we wanna have simply before we open our mouth. Because if you trust me, what I say will feel true. If right. you don't trust me, we've got another hour to try and gain your trust. And I've lost a lot of, uh, of opportunity. So right. <clears throat> that's one of the things we think about. And so that goes to kind of what are those tips and tools that we can use to engage behind the screen? And how does that, what does that matter, right? We don't have music anymore. We're not walking into a conference where you feel the cold air and you're looking at other people and you're feeling the energy and that visceral kind of, yes, I'm here, right? Salesforce is great at that with Dreamforce. It's like, mm -hmm. um, how do we do that? How do we capitalize? Because we have waste up. That's all we have. Yeah. And so I talk a lot about what's behind the screen because, and you'll see people go like this, there's a story in everything I do, right? And that story is not about my children or whatnot. It, this is the story that I can, I can people can relate to right away. And so the other thing to think about is, you know, how close are you to the monitor? How far back are you to the monitor? Or for example, if I'm down like this, there's a yes. different feeling you get. Or if I'm up like this, right? You yeah. feel like, or the best one is personal space. Um, <laughs> right, exactly. Or the big <laughs> headphones, right? Air traffic control. Air traffic yeah. control makes you feel like they're not listening, right? right? Air traffic control says there's so much else going on that I'm just going to sit here with you. Versus I'm, that, you wouldn't have that in a personal conversation. So you want them to feel like you're just sitting at the table having a coffee. If I don't use my arms, right, there's, a, there's like what's going on. But if I sit up tall and you see skin and you see me moving, it's, it's, it's a comfort. I am not a threat. You know where my hands are going to be going. Yeah. Um, and we're, talking with your hands can play a lot more into what you're trying to say. Uh, and the other one is eye contact that we, I talk about in look directly at the screen. Don't look away. Don't look down because immediately what you do is you're saying you're not as important as this conversation for those who are presenting and for those leaders and if the teams that you're leading. I also, I also talk about reducing the amount of slides that you show. Oh, yes. We all know, right? A slide comes on and we're like, sweet, I can check that phone. Yeah, like, hold on one second, right? And you lose them, you lose them. Um, and you know, everything is about stories and getting their stories. And like you say, I love it, tell me more, tell me why. Uh, when you're on Zoom, it's even more critical that you maintain that face-to-face -face with them. When it comes to kind of your neckline and, and all the things behind you, you know, it's a really mindful thing, I think, especially for women, right? We have, you know, the V-neck or we have short hair, the earrings, right? And I, I work with women before when they were on stage. One of the women I worked with was the ex-CEO, CMO. She's now moved on and retired. Uh, and she was on the stage with Michelle Obama. And one of the things we talked about was, 
you know, you are now moderating. So, you know, you slightly take a back seat. This is who is most important. But if you're wearing earrings, they're dangling, right? And so instead of listening to your message, I'm staring at the earrings that are moving around, right? Or if you have things on your wrist and they're going up and down, you've just lost me because I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. So uh, sometimes what I do now with my clients is I'll say, all right, tell me the story you're trying to say. And they'll say, okay. And I'll say, and I'll say like we say, what's authentic? I'll say, okay, let me tell you the story that I'm reading right now. And nice. is, does that align? And if not, then let's, let's work on what we're missing and how can we tweak that just slightly so that every day mm -hmm. there's that mindset. And there is, you're right, you, you, you said it perfectly, which is how do I relate and connect with them and not put them off and look like I'm you know, overdressed or, or not relatable to them because of what I'm, I'm wearing? And it's a fine balance. I think it gets easier when you know what you're trying to say. Yeah. Well, so let me ask you just a couple of questions that are about, you know, you in particular. So, you know, if you look back on your own career, what's the most important professional lesson that you've ever learned that helped you to shock your potential to the next level? You know, the minute you asked me that question, two, th two events happened because we all have different chapters of our, our life. And in the book, every single thing I do is through stories. So every story I tell has a lesson. But the first story that comes up is when I entered into the corporate world, young, bright eyed, I've got everything behind me and you should, I can do everything, right? It's that mentality of why am I not vice president of this startup? Uh, and, and I realized for one day, I just woke up and I said, you know what? If I'm going to be taken seriously, if I'm going to be seen as what I know I can do, right? Then I need to dress and believe it myself. And I was dressing as the position that I was in as an executive assistant, because that's what you're supposed to do, right? That's your age and that's your experience. And I realized I kind of said, swore slightly to myself uh, and said, <laughs> blanket. Um, because if I'm not gonna believe in myself, no one else is going to. And it was this one mom moment I opened up the doors to the, to the company. It was a Thursday. I had gone to J. Crew the night before or the day before. I had bought my first pair of pants, uh, slacks, which is one of my staples. Um, I had gotten that button down and I didn't buy it because that's what you should wear. I bought it because it made me feel confident. It was no one was going to look at anything else but me and my message. And I was here to play the game walk in and one of the senior vice presidents, you know, walking by, you know, on a meeting and stops and goes, are you leaving? Are you interviewing? <laughs> and I realized I'm like, I have power. I am seen for the first time. I am seen, right? I had long blonde hair. I put my blonde hair back. I actually at one point bought, and it's not really in the book, but I bought fake glasses because I was like, how do I figure out to be taken seriously? And by the way, it's really hard to look when you're going down an escalator. Um, so that was one of this huge shock and oh my God. right. And then taking, you know, this whole shock of this, this program that you do in these five steps, it's fascinating. I love it. And looking at now understanding what you do, this J crew experience led me to where I am today. And the mm -hmm. second shock that I had to do was this feeling that I wasn't good enough. I jumped out. I was a mom for eight years. When I came back into it, I felt I had nothing to offer that I had no value. And it, it was why, why me? And, and so what I did was I've never been in the fashion industry. I was in tech. I was in mobile gaming. Um, I love data. Um, I'm also, and I love human behavior. So how do you put those together? And I was in organizational development. And I said, I got to figure out this fashion thing because not everyone can play the game. I grew up shopping, shopping at Goodwill, but I figured out how to find my story within my budget. And mm -hmm. so the next one is, this is where I really had to go from, you know, how are people going to see what I can do and how to, you, you, you need me. That's mind shift. So yes, yes. I decided to fly out on all my husband's R miles. Uh, he traveled a lot at the time. I borrowed this huge jacket uh, of Juno Watanabe. Couldn't say the name. Didn't even know who, the, who it was. I borrowed from one of my uh, women uh, clients. It was this massive one. And you'll see this in the book. It's called Face the Cold. And I go to buy these Hervé Leger, didn't know the name, the tag was hanging off at a consignment shop, being like, okay, this is the outfit I need to do in order to like fit in to fashion week. Knew no one. 
it was 10 degrees, negative 10 actually with a windshield, wind chill. I decided to go to Lincoln Center because that's where all of the models were going. I had no ticket, yeah. knew no one, didn't understand what fashion was. Uh, and I said, I want to go right to the top and I want to figure out what this world's about. And does it pertain to me? Does it pertain to the average woman? Does it pertain to women in the corporate world? Because it's, it's not real to us. It's not, it's not an everyday thing that we can play. Right. And so I'm standing at this fountain, freezing my butt off. And I have a moment of, why me? So I'm, and, and I'm like, what am I doing here? You know, why am I doing this? It feels so like, I feel out of place. I don't, I feel inferior. And this little voice said, why not you? You have nothing to lose. You, the, for the, when you step out right now, you can tell your own story. You can disrupt, right? And I decided that right then and there, they needed me. Right then and there, I had something to give. I had stories to tell and I had permission for others to try it. And I said, what is my goal? And I said, my goal is to get photographed. And my goal is to say, this is what it looks like, but that's not reality. Fashion is, fashion is art, mo movement of art, right? Um, and I got that one picture. Couldn't feel yeah. my finger, couldn't feel my toes or fingers. Um, and, and it was a huge pivot. And again, people, it's that mind shift, mm -hmm. right? It's that mind shift. And from that, six years later, I, I stood out, right? That's, I stood out. I decided to make it like that, right? And then over the next course of years, I honed my skills. I researched, I asked around, I, um, I said, what works for you? And I was going into coach store, just buying a keychain, talking to people. Um, yes. And, and then I, as I built it again, I said, okay, what are, where do I want to go? Who are, what pieces of all these leaders do I love? What fits with my own purpose? So I wanted to know, how do they operate? How did they get there? What do they read, right? How are they leading? And then I was able to kind of cultivate all of that to, to myself. Um, and finally, and I talk about this again in my book and you do too, is knowing your value. Yes. Asking for what you deserve, especially for women, it's about money a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. Knowing your value, knowing that no means not now. Right. That, that failure is success. It just shortens your learning curve. Um, <laughs> right? And that there is no box. There's no box. Because Absolutely. the unimaginable is achievable if it's why not me? Why not me? So those are my two massive, massive shifts. I think we are starting to wake up to really want to hear people's stories now more. And, and that's important because we grow as a society, not just as individuals, when we, when we desire to hear other people's stories. And then when we're comfortable and confident sharing our stories, we create growth and change. Right. And that goes back to leadership style, which is vulnerability and humility. What's fascinating and what's so important to always drive when you start to think, why, why me, is people need to relate to people. And as a leader, people follow those who are like them, who have struggled like them, who have success stories like them, that they can say, I'm not alone. And, and they're kind of, they've been through this. And during these times of crisis, especially for leaders, it's, They've been through this. They don't have all the answers. Right. They're, they're imperfect, you know, perfectly imperfect or whatever it might, you know, how the saying goes. John Legend has that in, in, his, yeah. in his song. Um, and I can do it and I want to be with them. And whatever journey we go on, I know that this leader has me in mind because they ask, like you say, tell me more, tell me why, what yeah. can I do? And it's not about the leader. It's about those who, who they lead. Because Absolutely. the leader is not the one that makes the company successful. It's the employees and the clients that drive it. And their yeah. job is to get to that, the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. Fantastic. So now I know we'll have all your contact information on the show notes, but if somebody is too eager to, uh, to take the time to read them yet and want to find you, how are, how are the, uh, what are the best ways to find you? Sure. For me, I love, I love just to hear directly from your listeners and to continue this conversation. So you can reach out to uh, my email, which is Janelle at JanelleDiane.com. Um, reach out to me there or go to my website at JanelleDiane.com. There's a lot of information there. Um, there's 
you know, topics that you can listen to. There's, there's extra, you know, emails. I mean, sorry, there's articles, uh, podcasts that I've talked about before about different parts of what I do. The book is available. And one of the things I was going to want to say is I just recorded my own audible. Um, and I did it in my own voice. I feel like my story is told in my own voice. And so the book is great. Uh, you can get that on Amazon. If you want more stories, the stories that I haven't told the stories that I thought, uh, that you wanted to hear a little bit more about, or people were asking me more about, I did talk a little bit more in audible, in audible and you can hear my stories directly from me. Well, yeah. before we wrap up any last words of wisdom or pearls of advice for my listeners and viewers. Your story matters, you know, um, and anytime you start to feel like what's, you know, how am I going out there? How am I going to, to stand out and be seen? It's go back to the purpose, go back to why do I get up and why do people need me? And what can I give that's going to really disrupt and change the way that I think about myself and how others can think. So, you know, there is no box. The unimaginable is achievable and that, you know, it takes just one step at a time. I love it. Well, Janelle, thank you so much for joining me today. And I look forward to continuing our dialogues as always and staying connected. Absolutely. Thanks again for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Shock Your Potential podcast. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and like us today.